Okay, we're going to talk today about organizing informative papers. Uh, one thing that you need to keep in mind as we go through this is that we're not talking about necessarily how you will organize a paper in your head um, and the process that you use to organize the paper. What we're talking about is what the organization of the paper should look like when you turn it in to me. Okay? And there's a reason that that's important, and you'll see it as we go. Um, it, it is a way that you can work on this scratch outline that you're going to turn in this week, and, and it's an idea that you can keep in mind. But it's always important to remember that papers are research-driven. The data leads to the reasons, and the reasons lead to the claim. That's the process we use to write papers. But we're going to talk about the finished product of the paper. And as we talked about, when we talked about Tolman reasoning, when we look at the paper, the claim comes first, then the reason, then the data. But in the process of of gathering the information and organizing the paper, you actually gather the data first, the data leads to the reasons, and the reasons lead to the claim. So we're talking about once you have put together at least working reasons and working claim based on your data, this is what the drafts of your paper are going to look like in terms of organization. For this paper, and maybe for your second paper, you will be using emphatic order. Emphatic order is one of three major organizational schemes that tends to be used in academic writing. The other two are chronological order and spatial order. There are some specialized organizations based on topic, and we'll see this when we talk about our second paper. If you um, are going to write a second paper based on discussing an illness, and you're going to write an informative paper about an illness. There's a very special organization for that kind of paper. It's kind of chronological, but not completely. Okay, So um, there are some specialized organizational schemes that differ based on topic. But by and large, emphatic, emphatic, chronological, and spatial are the three major types of organization for informative papers. And emphatic is the um, organizational pattern that you'll tend to use in academic writing most often. So let's look at what emphatic order is. Think of emphatic order as a triangle. Remember that it applies only to the body of the paper. There might be some other things in your paper, as we'll discuss in a few minutes, that come before you get into the body of the paper, certainly the introduction, and, and there might be a background, but we'll talk about that in a few moments. But once you get into the body of the paper, that's when emphatic order and this triangle idea comes into play. And it moves from the least important reason to the most important reason. Now, I use three reasons in um, my discussion simply because it's an easy way to demonstrate organization. But in truth, you might only have two reasons, or you might have four. I wouldn't go with more than four in a five to seven page paper. Because if you do, there isn't going to be enough space to develop your ideas very well. But you could have two reasons or four reasons, or you could have three reasons, which is what I use. I just use three reasons because it makes it easy to demonstrate. Okay. And the discussion of each reason is longer than the discussion before it. That's what makes it a triangle. So the least important reason that you discuss will have the least amount of data, because it's the least important. That's what makes it the least important. So that's going to be the shortest discussion, because it has the least amount of data. And then the second least or intermediate important reasons, 
are going to have a little more data for them. That's what makes them a little bit more important. So that section is going to be longer than the section of the least important reason. Actually, it's acceptable for them to be about the same size, so you know, it could be kind of more of a square. But definitely, you don't want the, second, the discussion of the second least important reason to be shorter than the discussion of the least important reason. That's why we have this triangle effect. And then finally, you'll have the discussion of the most important reason. If it's most important, there should be the most data to support it, right? And if there's the most data, that's going to make that discussion longer. That's why it's all a triangle. So the discussion of the most important reason should be um, in simple, emphatic order. It should be the longest section of your paper. The sections might be a little bit more equal in length than the triangle actually demonstrates, and that's OK. But definitely, you don't want the sections to be jumbled so that say the, the, the smallest section is the least important reason and the longest section is the second least, and then the, the discussion of the most important reason is of an intermediate length. You don't want that. Um, you want it to be a triangle, um, or you definitely don't want the discussion of the most important reason to be the shortest portion of your paper. And I do get papers like that sometimes, and that's a problem. Because what that tells me is that either your organization is wrong or your development is wrong. And those are two major aspects of grading your paper. And they're two major aspects of the paper, so it's important to keep that in mind. Now, if you are comparing in our first paper, if you are comparing supporters and critics' views and they disagree on the same reasons, you're going to have one triangle. But if they disagree about different reasons, you're going to have two triangles. Okay. So you will have the supporters' least important reason discussed first, and the supporters' second least important reason discussed second and a little bit longer than the supporters' least important reason. And the supporters' most important reason discussed last and the longest of the sections of the discussions in the supporters' section. Okay? And then you might have a transitional paragraph and then you would have another triangle for the critics. So you actually have two emphatic order triangles, one for the supporters' views and one for the critics' views. And the discussion of the critics' least important reason is going to be shorter, okay, that would be this, is going to be shorter than the discussion of the supporters' most important reason. That's why you have two triangles. And what this does is it helps you address the concern of proportion in writing in, in, in um, informative papers, right? Because the supporter's most important reason is definitely, the discussion of that is definitely going to be longer than the discussion of the critic's least important reason. And the support, the discussion of the supporter's most important reason is probably going to be roughly the same as the discussion of the critic's most important reason. Roughly. Um, you definitely want to make sure that about half the paper is devoted to discussing the supporters, and about half the paper is devoted to discussing the critics. Okay? Now, let's get down to the nitty-gritty of how your final paper is going to look as it's organized. Okay? Again, this isn't the process you use to decide on the organization. The process is collect the data, Determine based on the data what the most important reasons are and the second most important reason and the least important reason, right? And then, having determined that and written your reasons, you use your reasons to write the plan of development in your claim, okay? So the process you use to come up with this organizational scheme and decide what goes where is data, reason, claim.
we're going to talk about what the final paper is going to look like. So we're going to talk about it in terms of claim, reason, data. You got that? It's very important that you don't that you understand that. If you don't understand that, email me at deborah.oki at csn.edu and of course from an account other than Canvas. Okay? Because it's important that you understand that the process you use is you collect the data, then you write reasons based on the data, and then you write your working claim based on the reasons. We're talking about what the final paper is going to look like, so we're going to discuss it in terms of claim reasons data. Okay. So, if the critics disagree in the same reasons, we'll have one triangle. And what happens is we start out with our broad introduction that's going to lead to the claim, and I'm going to use a discussion of the death penalty, because for one thing, you can't write about that for this class. Um, there are several topics you can't write about, and it's mainly because it's too easy to buy papers on the internet for them. Um, and we'll talk about that when we get to the second paper. Um, so you have your broad statement introduction leading to the claim, and we're going to use the death penalty because, frankly, we could use my antidepressant um, example, but the reasons are so long that to discuss organization, it would be really hard to fit them on the PowerPoints. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, that's the reason. Okay, so we might start out with a statement if we're going to discuss the death penalty that um, how crime should be punished has been um, an important consideration throughout the history of mankind. Okay, that's a really broad statement. Okay, and then each state, each sentence in our introduction will become more specific until we get to our claim, and our claim, if our supporters and critics are disagreeing on the same reasons, might look like this. Supporters and critics disagree on whether the death penalty is less expensive than life in prison, deters crime, and is cruel or unusual punishment. And yeah, they do actually disagree on the data on those points. Okay. Then, after we have our introduction, we might have a section on background. Might. This is really one of the few sections of the paper, other than transitional paragraphs, um, that's really optional. And here's how you decide whether you want to have a background. Um, if there is historical information that is important, and that you feel that your audience would benefit if they understood the history of how something became um, the topic of debate, that's one reason you might have a background. Another reason might be, remember that we talked about the fact that you're writing to an academic audience. And so people in that audience would understand the terms that are common to that discipline. But your topic might have some specific terms that maybe everybody in the discipline wouldn't be familiar with. So one thing that you might need to do in background is to explain some important terminology that would be used throughout the paper, or to identify acronyms. Acronyms um, are like initials that are used in place of entire, um, usually nouns, okay, that are multi-word nouns. A really common one is USA, okay? Because writing USA is a lot shorter than writing United States of America. Now, of course, your audience would know what USA is, but you might have some um, acronyms that you're going to be using frequently in your paper, and you want to go ahead and identify them up front in the same place so people can always look back and find out what you're talking about if they need to. On the other hand, you might not need any background. 
the death penalty is a good example. Yeah, you could include some background on the fact that, that the death penalty was considered unconstitutional for a, um, a short period, and then it was constitutional again, and it's been left up to the states. You, you could include that, but on the other hand, it doesn't really have that much important bearing on how this became a topic of debate. And most people kind of know most of the important points about the history of the death penalty. So you might or might not have a background with that. It, it, it kind of depends on, on what you want to do as a writer. Okay, so these are the sections of the paper, the introduction and the background, that actually come before we move into our emphatic triangle. Remember, I said there would be some, and there they are. So now we're going to move into our discussions of our reasons, and this is where our emphatic triangle comes up. Now, notice that in our claim, and also if we have mentioned them before the claim in the introduction, I have named the supporters and the critics first. It doesn't have to be that way. I do that just as a convention, more or less, when I'm teaching, so that I always remember what I'm talking about. Okay, But you could discuss the critics before the supporters. Just because, in my examples, I always discuss the supporters first doesn't mean you have to. It's just what I do because I have to discuss one before the other in presenting this information. Um, so, first we're going to discuss the supporters' views on costs, because the supporters are named first in our claim and elsewhere, perhaps, in our introduction, and the first reason that's listed in our plan of development in our claim is the uh, cost factor, whether or not the death penalty is less expensive than life imprisonment. So first we're going to talk about the supporters' view on cost, and then we're going to talk about the critics' view on cost, because the critics are named second. And the views on cost is our first reason in our plan of development. Next we're going to talk about the supporters' views on deterrent, because again, supporters are named first in our claim, and the deterrent factor is the second reason named in our plan of development. Then we're going to talk about the critics' views on deterrent, uh, because again, critics are mentioned second in our claim, and e maybe even before that in our introduction. And again, the second reason listed in our plan of development is the deterrent factor. And this discussion of deterrent is overall going to be at least as long and preferably longer than our discussion on cost. Okay? And roughly half of our discussion on cost is going to be on the supporters' views on cost, and roughly half is going to be on the critics. And roughly half of our discussion on deterrent is going to be about the supporters' views, and roughly half is going to be about the critics. And then we're going to move into the supporters' views on cruel and unusual punishment and, cons and unconstitutionality, which we have determined by doing our research is what we have the most data on and therefore is the most important reason. Okay. Um, and we discuss supporters first because supporters are named first in our claim and introduction. And we are discussing the cruel and unusual punishment last because that's the last thing that's, that's discussed in our claim. Now remember, this is what the final paper looks like. This is not the process that you use to make these decisions. You, the process you use is you collect the data, then you write the reasons, and then you write the work and claim. We're discussing the final paper. And, and what the final paper should look like in terms of organization, not the process you use to actually organize the information. Um, and then the last thing we'll discuss is the critics' views on cruel and unusual punishment. And the entire section on cruel and unusual punishment will be the longest section of our paper. 
and roughly half of it will be devoted to what the supporters say about cruel and unusual punishment, and roughly half of it will be devoted to what the critics' views are on cruel and unusual punishment. Now notice something about this in terms of what we talked about when we discuss position, proportion, and, and language. Supporters are discussed first, and critics are discussed last. That takes care of our position concern, right? We're not discussing the same view last anywhere. Um, and if roughly half of the cost discussion is the supporters and roughly half is the critics, and roughly half of the deterrent is the supporters and roughly half is the critics, and roughly half of cruel and unusual is supporters and roughly half is the critics, that's also going to address our position, our proportion concerns as far as being informative. <clears throat> Pardon me. So that just leaves language. Okay? So you see, organization really helps to address both the proportion and the position factors in writing informative papers. That's why there's kind of a standard way to approach the organization. Something else that's important to notice is that these are introductions, these reasons are introductions to sections, not topic statements for paragraphs. The, the view on cost might overall just be one paragraph, or you might have one paragraph for supporters and one for critics. You might have a couple of paragraphs for supporters and a couple of paragraphs for critics on the deterrent discussion, and you might have several paragraphs on the supporters' view of cruel and unusual and several on the critics' view of, crit of cruel and unusual. Okay. okay, let's move on. Keep those things in mind because a lot of them also apply to the next topic we're going to discuss, which is how to support a paper if the supporters and critics disagree, but they disagree for different reasons, not the same reason. That's called a topic-by-topic -topic organizational scheme, which is, again, how your final paper will look. It's not the process that you're going to use to get the information organized, because that begins with the data. This is where we come into our two-triangle situation. Again, we have a broad statement introduction that leads to our claim, and we might have a claim that states this. Supporters state the death penalty is cheaper than life imprisonment, deters violent crime, and provides victims' families with closure. Critics state the death penalty is cruel and unusual punishment, is handed down with racial and sexual bias, and leads to executing innocent people. So, the, the, the supporters and the critics are still disagreeing about whether or not the death penalty should be used or should be legal, but they're disagreeing for different reasons. It's not that they disagree about the data for the same reasons, which is the example we looked at before. Okay. Then again, we would have our optional background section, which goes by the same thing we've already talked about. So basically, except for the fact that the claim is going to be different, of course, the section that comes be before we move into um, the body of our paper, which is where we'll use emphatic order, is going to be the same regardless of whether we use point by point or topic by topic. But once we move into the body, that's when we have the two-triangle emphatic order structure. First, we discuss the supporters' views overall, simply because in our introduction and in our claim, the supporters are discussed before the critics. As I've said, that's just what I do to teach. You might discuss the critics before the supporters. So we have our supporters' views on cost, which is the first reason the supporters give in our plan of development. Then we have the supporters' views on deterrence, which is the second reason the supporters give in our plan of development and our claim. And then we discuss our supporters' views on closure, which is the final reason that supporters give in our claim. Now, we have a triangle here. 
Okay. The supporters' views on cost will probably have the least amount of data, so it will be the shortest. The supporters' views on deterrence will have the second least amount of data, so it's the second least important, and it's discussed second. And the supporters' views on closure for family is the most important point and probably has the most important data, so it's going to be longer. So the closure discussion will be longer than the deterrence discussion, and the deterrence discussion will be longer than the cost discussion, and that gives us our emphatic triangle, right? And then we might have a transitional paragraph if we need one. And then we'll discuss the critics' views on cruel and unusual punishment. Critics after supporters, because in our introduction, critics are discussed after supporters. We discuss cruel and unusual punishment first. Cruel and unusual punishment is discussed, is listed as the first reason in our plan of development and our claim. It's going to be the shortest section of our discussion on critics' reasons. Then the next thing we're going to discuss is the critics' views on racist and sexist sentencing. Um, Critics after supporters, because in our introduction, critics comes after supporters. And views on racist and sexist sentencing is the second reason listed in our plan of development for critics. So it's going to be the second reason that we're going to discuss for critics. And then finally, we will discuss the critics' views on execution of the innocents. Critics before supporters, just like in the introduction, and the um, views on execution of innocence is discussed last, and it is the last reason listed in our plan of development for critics. I've been using because, and I guess I should have been using and. Okay. And then we have our conclusion. So, this is a triangle too. Okay. Because the discussion on views of cruel and unusual punishment will be will have the least amount of data because it's the least important, so it will be the shortest of the critics' views, and then uh, of the discussion of the critics' views, and then the views on racist and sexist sentencing will have more data, so it will be somewhat longer than the discussion on views on cruel and unusual punishment. And then the views on execution of innocence will have the most data, so that discussion will be the longest discussion of the critics' views. So we have one triangle for the supporters and one triangle for the critics, and the discussion of the critics' views on cruel and unusual punishment will be probably significantly shorter than our discussion of supporters' views on closure because this is the most important topic for the supporters and this is the least important topic for the critics. So we have two triangles here. Okay. Overall, in summary, what you should have gotten from this is that the organization of your paper needs to be both emphatic and parallel. That helps to address the concerns about positioning and, to some degree, proportion in informative writing. The least important reasons are discussed first and are the shortest sections of the paper, regardless of whether you've got topic by topic or point by point. Okay. The most important reasons are discussed last and are the longest sections of the paper, again, regardless of whether you're using topic by topic or point by point. If supporters are discussed first in the introduction and claim, then the supporters' reasons are discussed first in the paper. And if the critics' reasons are discussed first in the introduction and claim, the critics' reasons are discussed first in the paper. And the reasons are discussed in the order that's listed in the plan of development and the claim. Remember, we're talking about what the final paper should look like because the paper is organized claim, reason, data. The process you're using to figure out what goes where and how to write that is not claim, reason, data. It's data, reason, claim. The paper has to be research driven. Okay? But one of the things that, that, that using emphatic 
order and uh, emphatic order helps us to address proportion and parallel organization ensures that the same side is not discussed both first and last which helps us to address the concerns about positioning and that only leaves language. Okay, now this is all a little bit complicated. You might need to go through this a couple of times and take notes on it and go through it while you're working on your organization. And of course, you're going to turn in a working scratch outline with sources at the end of this week. And you're going to need to have an understanding of how to use organization to turn in that outline. Now, keep in mind, it's just a scratch outline, which means that your paper doesn't have to adhere to it in any way. All it really does is it lets me know that you have an idea of how you're going to approach organizing your very first draft and that you know what sources you're going to use to provide data for what reasons. You can move it around, switch it around, leave things out, add things, whatever, to the final paper. I don't compare them. It's just a step that lets me know that you're on track in getting your paper written so that you'll be able to write it by the deadline and do a good job. Okay, that ends our discussion of organization. Like I said, it's a little complicated, so you might need to go through it a few times. But um, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate one minute to email me at deborah.oki at csn.edu, and that email address is on the home page on Canvas, of course, as well as elsewhere. Um, and we know, by now we know very, very, very well that you have to email me from an account other than Canvas so that I get your email, okay? Okay, thanks so much for listening to this. I know it's complicated. Um, go through the presentation again and pause it where you need to to take notes and review. That's, that's one nice thing about um, having things on video as opposed to class is that you can listen to part of it and stop and go back and listen to it again and take notes and go through and review your notes and make sure everything's making sense. So make sure you do that because I know this is a little bit complicated but it's also really important because it's going to affect both um, organization and development in grading your paper. So, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. You might need to take a few minutes off right now and kind of shake your brain out because that was a very long, complicated discussion. Okay? And we'll get together again shortly. Thank you!